About 15 people have lost their lives in an accident on Agulu Road in Anyocha local government area of Anambra State, southeast of Nigeria. The said incident is set to have occurred when a lorry laden with iron beams lost control and collided with an oncoming commercial vehicle, killing some occupants and leaving others injured. A number of state governor, Willie Obiano, has visited the scene of the accident and the hospital to sympathize with the survivors and commiserate with the bereaved. <laughs> The tragic scene of the accident at Agulu, near the Agulu Lake, that left about a dozen people dead and others injured on a Monday morning in Anambra State, leaves residents in shock. <laughs> This survivor says the lorry laden with iron beams swerved while descending the hill, having apparently lost its brakes and collided with oncoming commercial vehicles. Some eyewitnesses claim the death toll is about 15. We are coming from Oka. Then the, there was a trailer carrying iron. Then our bus was coming. So from far, the thing had already failed big break. So the thing was now struggling to know if it can just enter anywhere or so. Before we know it, our driver and the other car coming from our back had already hit the trailer. The trailer went the other way. We went inside the gutter. Then that was our, before I knew it. I just immediately I just jumped out of the bus. Then before you know it, everybody were already dead in the bus. Just me, the person sitting beside me, and a man at the back that came out alive. The lorry that first moved fell black for the up. So it's coming down here. Now you first see the corona bus, corona car there. Two people there died. The husband and the wife died instantly. The second bus is a four-seater there. All of them died. Only three people survived there. And the people that back for the lorry, five people died instantly. While the injured and the dead are evacuated, other residents blame the accident on overloading and poor adherence to safety measures. Governor William Biano, in company of the State Commissioner of Police, Mr. John Abang, visits the scene of the accident to assess the level of damage. He directs the relevant agency of government to act immediately to forestall any reoccurrence. So what we are going to do to stop this is that we are going to put a barrier uh, be before tomorrow in the other place so that we can divert the bigger trucks to the other side. From the scene of the accident, the governor heads to St. Joseph's Hospital, Adaz in Nuku, where some of the accident survivors are receiving treatment. He sympathizes with them and assures them of offsetting their medical bills. It's an unfortunate incident. So my sympathies to the families of the bereaved and the injured. Uh, the injured, we're going to take good care uh, until they, they, they are uh, properly taken care of. We can achieve it by tomorrow. Yes. As the governor departs, relatives and friends of the survivors all wait patiently in the hospital, hoping for the best outcome for their loved ones. Fortunate accident indeed. Let's shift our gears now, shall we, to business news with Anwar Odo. First, First Bank. Thank you, Gimba. Let's begin business news tonight in the oil sector. Nearly 3 million barrels of Nigerian crude were exported to China within the month of August, and that's the highest volume since the middle of 2015. Traders say the very large carrier of Nigerian crude was seen bound for China, marking its biggest month of buy from Africa's top exporter in years. At the same time, China's gasoline export in July surged 75% from a year ago, with its products reaching as far afield as Nigeria and Mexico. Meanwhile, traders are also saying that selling prices for some Nigerian grades were roughly in line with the official selling price, which had been marked down this month due to sluggish U.S. and European demand. The need to diversify the Nigerian economy has continued to draw government attention and corporate organizations are also planning to expand investment in non-oil sectors like agriculture. And that's because besides its ability to create more employment opportunities, agriculture remains a viable source of Nigeria's economic development. The annual First Bank Agri Expo provides a platform for national disclosure in this regard. The 2019 edition in Lagos highlights opportunities in the agri sector.
Participants at the third edition of the First Bank Agri Expo cuts across players in all segments of the agricultural value chain, including funders of agribusinesses and policymakers. The event represents First Bank's commitment to agriculture and agribusiness development in Nigeria. Under the CBN Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme, the federal government CBN initiative designed to provide long-term credit facilities to commercial agricultural enterprises at single-digit interest rates. It will interest you to note that First Bank has supported over 120 projects. That is approximately 23% of the total of 509 projects that have been supported under that scheme. And we have disbursed over 100 billion naira under that initiative. Organizations, state and federal governments partnering with First Bank come with goodwill messages of reassurance to work towards realizing the economic potentials of agriculture. The days are gone when financial institution will just sit down. They have to be proactive. And I think in this regard, I would like to congratulate First Bank of Nigeria. And I hope First Bank of Nigeria being the first will lead the way to this important revolution. The lead speaker and panelists shared deep insights on the theme, agricultural value chain, spotlighting opportunities and managing risks. Even though commodities prices are volatile, the higher you are on the value chain, the closer you are to the final consumer, the less vulnerable you are to the inevitable swings in volatility when it comes to value chains. Besides the plenary session, the expo features three master classes of in-depth analysis on specific areas of agribusiness facilitated by enterprising subject matter experts. The 2019 Agri Expo also hosts over 40 exhibitors displaying technology in farm equipment and tools, as well as packaged, finished agricultural produce, logistics and supply. And let's delve into the stock market now. Despite sell pressure to most capitalized equities, the stock market is beginning the first trading week in a month all green, following renewed interest for low-priced blue-chip stocks. Let's join Layo Adedubuke for the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The month of September gets off to a positive start as investors begin the first trading week with bagging hunting for low-priced equities across board as more earnings stream in. Despite losses in share price of Dangote Cement and MTN Nigeria, the market's main index closed Monday's session higher by 0.14% from Friday's figures, while total value of listed equities rose by 19 billion naira. The gains, which is attributed to price increase from 22 and mid-cap and high-value equities, was led by a 9.78% advance from Cement Company of Northern Nigeria against losses recorded by 17 equities led by 10% load shared on UACN's share price. Overall volume of shares traded for the day stand at 111.51 million units in over 3,100 transactions, largely contributed by the shares of Zenit Bank, UBA and FBN Holdings. Well, that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Layo Adegoki. Thank you, Laya. Meanwhile, it's slightly mixed performance for global stock markets. Investors are still digesting positive UK and Chinese manufacturing data. As for US tariffs on its main economic rival takes effect. Here's some of the closing numbers for today. That's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Gimba. You first. First Bank. Brilliant. Many thanks indeed, Anne.
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he does not want an election, as he called on lawmakers this evening not to vote for further delay to Brexit. Lawmakers are planning to try to seize parliamentary time on Wednesday to pass legislation which would force Mr Johnson to ask for an extension to Britain's exit from the European Union. Simon Pierce has more international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. The most powerful storm to hit the Bahamas since records began has torn off roofs and caused severe flooding. Look at this. We need help. Everything down. Everything down. This footage was from Marsh Harbour in the Bahamas as the storm hovers over the northwestern islands. Meanwhile, amateur footage shows strong winds lashing the islands of New Providence and Freeport in Grand Bahama. The slow-moving Category 5 hurricane is the second strongest Atlantic hurricane on record. It's packing sustained winds of up to 270 kilometers per hour and may cause a storm surge of up to 23 feet high. The number of casualties is unclear, but the Red Cross fears some 13,000 homes have been damaged or destroyed. In a press conference, the Bahamian president made clear just how bad he expects the storm to be. This is probably the most saddened and worst day of my life to address the Bahamian people. And um, I just want to say that as a physician, I've been trained to withstand many things, but never anything like this. We're facing a hurricane, Hurricane Dorian, that one that we've never seen in the history of Bahamas. Wind velocity as high as 200, 180 miles per hour, with gusts in excess of 200 miles per hour. Thousands of secondary school and university students have boycotted classes in Hong Kong in the latest pro-democracy protests there. Organisers say 10,000 pupils from 200 secondary schools did not turn up for the first day for the new school year. The student action comes on the same day as a call for a broad two-day strike and large rally. Protests over the weekend saw some of the worst violence in weeks between protesters and police. Demonstrators threw petrol bombs, lit fires and attacked the city's parliament building, while police used tear gas, rubber bullets, water cannons and fired live warning shots into the air. Commuters were also caught up in police violence after riot police moved to detain suspected protesters from the subway. Local TV footage showed police using batons and pepper spray on people in Prince Edward MTR station before making arrests. Some suspects were seen being beaten as they cowered on the floor. At least 100 prisoners of war were killed and about 50 others injured when a Saudi-led coalition airstrike hit a prison in Yemen's central province of Dharma. According to the Houthis, the targeted prison housed about 170 prisoners who had been captured while fighting alongside government forces. The prisoners were about to be released in a few days in a prisoner swap. Rescue teams are still searching for possible survivors. Local authorities and the International Committee for the Red Cross are attending the scene. The leader of the opposition here in the UK, Jeremy Corbyn, says he wants an election and that his party would stop a no-deal Brexit. He told party members in Salford in the north of England that it was the last chance to stop Britain from leaving the EU on October the 31st without a deal. We are working with other parties to do everything necessary to pull our country back from the brink. Then we need a general election. However, the former British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, has warned the current Labour Party leader that an election would be an elephant trap, saying Boris Johnson was trying to make it appear as if the opposition was pushing them towards an election while they were, in fact, actively preparing for one. Boris Johnson knows that if no deal Brexit stands on its own as a proposition, it might well fail. But if he mixes it up with the Brexit question and the Corbyn question together in a general election, he could succeed. The actor Kevin Hart has suffered major injuries in a car accident in Los Angeles. The 40-year-old was being driven in a 1970 Plymouth Barracuda shortly after midnight on Mulholland Highway in California when the driver lost control of the car and it tumbled down an embankment. And finally, the World Aerobatic Championships has lit up the skies in Châteauroux in France. <laughs> 
The 30th edition of the championships drew big crowds to the town and they were rewarded with some breathtaking and precise mid-air manoeuvres in the clear blue skies. Louis Vanel did enough to claim the men's gold medal, edging out Alexandra Awalowski. The women's edition was won by France's Aude Lemerant, while Robert Holland of the USA took the freestyle honours. And that's your international news around the world in five. Well, and thanks indeed, Simon Pusey. Now, still ahead on the news 10. Liverpool defender Virgil van Dijk, Barcelona forward Lionel Messi and Juventus striker Cristiano Ronaldo made final three-man shortlist for FIFA's Men's Player of the Year. Stay with us.